2018, Japan-based service provider Rakuten Mobile surprised the industry by announcing a revolutionary approach to building its new network, using multiple infrastructure from multiple partners to create an open cloud-native operation. Last August, it launched Rakuten Symphony, a new business organization to spearhead the global adoption of cloud-native open RAN infrastructure and services. It's now ready to take the next steps with an innovative new platform to help other telecom operators scale their networks with a suite of next generation network software apps. But what exactly is Rakuten Symphony hoping to achieve? And why does CEO Tarek Amin believe his company has the magic source necessary to succeed? Well, I'm delighted to say that Tarek Amin joins us today from Tokyo. Tarek, very good to see you again. I'm not the only one who's been following Rakuten's progress intently in recent years, so too has the whole industry. Now we're going to address the implications of your news announcements, but we're also going to be discussing the broader issues faced by telcos and why you feel that a new approach is urgently needed. And I know that you also have a challenge that you're going to put to operators, and we'll hear about that later towards the end of the program. But let's get to the heart of the matter straight away. Let me ask you, what do you see is the problem. What are the limitations that led you to launch Symphony? Uh, delighted to be here with you uh, today. I think, um, you know, one of the things that I look at is what really has happened in our industry since we launched the first G. I think, to my knowledge, it was in 1981, if I'm not mistaken. And as we looked at the evolution of technology and we looked at adjacent uh, verticals, um, and especially around cloud, I really thought that the agility that exists in telecom industry, the uh, uh, fast pace of how we uh, introduce services really lagged behind. It lagged substantially if you compare to what existed in hyperscalers and the enterprise world. And um, when we started the dream and the idea of building Racket and Mobile in Japan, especially entering as a fourth mobile operator, we knew that we needed a very different approach. We knew that we cannot compete with the same existing architecture that existed from 1980 till today. We knew that we needed to move away from the complexity of hardware and move into a new software world, as a world in which AI, machine learning, and autonomy starts to take presence. So the formulation of Symphony started with an idea in 2019. And the idea, if I could share with you, the excitement that my team have saw when we enabled the first live call in Racket and Mobile, I knew then that this is transformative. I knew then how the elegance of life cycle management, especially on the VNFs that we deployed in Open RAN, and what it meant in terms of service agility, service resiliency, and the ability to truly get a network that's plug and play, zero touch provisioning and deliver better customer experience, I knew that this is really something that we shouldn't just leave in Japan and we should share with the rest of the world. As you say, Tarek, it's something you want to share with the rest of the world. So this is big picture stuff we're talking about. It's industry wide and we're talking about a global industry with mature operations in every country of the world, established operations and partnership models, hundreds of companies here, thousands. Are you saying that they've all got it wrong or that they're all heading in the wrong direction? I don't think it's, a, it's an idea whether they got it right or wrong. I think the idea is, I think, how can um, Rakuten and my team look at fast-paced acceleration of transformation? Um, you know, the way that we looked at it is the current solutions that exist in the marketplace, we thought these are uneconomical, unfeasible for today's challenges. It's just a very different construct today in terms of what existed and the innovations that came on cloud. So what I believe is, is we got stuck as an industry as a whole. I mean, me personally, I've been doing this for 26 years. I've seen what happened in the early days and the complexities of rolling out networks. And while we always thought of a world in order for us to upgrade into one generation of technology to the other is about hardware swaps, I, I personally got influenced, not necessarily with what happened in telecom, but what is happening in the hyperscalers world? I was inspired to see the services and the agility that is launched in, in the cloud environment. And I think this is really the epiphany of the problem that I believe. When we talk about the killer app, 
whether it is for a killer app for 4G or a killer app for 5G. My personal humble opinion, this killer app is a network, a network that's built on the cloud. So the issue, I believe, is you know maybe we all got caught around the, the skills that we have within the organization, not paying attention to what is happening on adjacent verticals, with not paying attention to the fast pace of transformation that was uh, uh, largely happened because of adoption of cloud and the elasticity and the elegance that the cloud brought. I think really that is the, the, the intersection point that the industry is, is, uh, is facing. And when I look at my colleagues and the industry as a whole, I think there is an acceptance now that the reality is this is a matter of survivability, the ability for you to move your existing workloads from proprietary hardware, legacy hardware into a cloud architecture, I don't think anybody would argue that this is the right journey and the right destinations that they need to move towards. Well, let's go into some detail now about perhaps the reasons why we as an industry got, got caught out and got, got stuck in, in our current ways of thinking and operations. You know, it's fair to say that we all acknowledge them to various degrees. As you say, the industry sees what it needs to do now, hopefully. Um, although we may be short of answers. I mean, the, the first shortcoming perhaps is that the telco industry is simply not competitive. Uh, how, what would you say to that? You know, competitive how and with, with whom should the telecoms industry be competitive? Well, I think, I think if you look at it, I mean, I'll, I'll give you my, my own opinion about what, what I see fundamentally as, as a bigger problem. I think all of us had to uh, face and, and develop some solutions to address. I really think in terms of um, you know, the innovation that would exist in telco, of course, we have accelerated you know, speed adoption. We have accelerated the ability to deliver unparalleled experience when it comes to wireless experience. But the way that innovation is delivered in telecommunication, I also found something fundamentally is wrong of how we absorb this innovation. If I ask you today, how many startups today a telecommunication company would endorse, would adopt, would deploy into their construct of this network. Uh, to my knowledge, maybe you will find very few. Why VCs do not like to invest in telecommunication companies? Well, there must be a reason for all of this. We must really stand up and say, you know, time is of the essence for us to think practically about who we want to be in the future. If it was me, and I, in fact, that's exactly what I've done in, in Rocket and Mobile, my first approach, I did not go for the larger companies. I went to see what is there in the, in, in the world as a whole. Looking at Altio Star that I thought was unbelievable in terms of their ideas and disruptions, but yet nobody wanted to give them a chance to transform, disrupt, and implement something, especially that people believed it's the magic sauce of radio networks, which is radio access. I looked at SON startups, you know, that, that nobody believed that they should exist because the complexities of integration, the software stack with base station radio software, you know, all these things resonated very much with myself and my team as we evaluated how we bring the best in breed, regardless if you're small or big, integrate them together to generate outcomes that are just absolutely amazing. So that's, to me, the, the bigger problem today is that we need to drive innovation at a faster pace. We need to accept some risks. Yes, you know, and we have to work with startups and we have to acknowledge them, endorse them. We have to show them paths to revenue in order for us to materialize the dreams that we all want. And I think this is the right approach. I am now focused quite a bit looking and evaluating all the adjacency of verticals, whether you look today at the transformation that's happening, for example, in auto industry, it is no longer about electric vehicles. It is a platform of autonomous cars of driving. That is, to me, what I aspire for telecom and what I aspire for Rocket and Symphony to deliver to the masses. Well, you write about the lack of support for startups in the industry. I mean, is, is it a case of the risk simply outweighs the, the new possibilities? Because I'm sure there's a lot of CTOs out there who'd love to to bring in some new companies and support some new companies, but for some reason or another, they're prohibited for doing so. The risk seems just too great. Well, I mean, there, there's, there's two things I could tell you. Um, there is, um, you know, if there is no pain, there is absolutely no gain. And, um, you know, when you bring a startup, um, one must accept that treating a startup like a, a mature, uh, large uh, vendor or partner 
um, you need to remove those uh, abstractions from your mind. You need to accept that a startup need to be mentored, need to be nurtured, need to be, uh, sorry to say this, loved. You need to show them a little bit of love on how they developed and evolved, and you need to believe into them. Once that happened, you, uh, you, I mean, I can tell you that the, the, the elegance of, of, of the emotions that would go into building the foundation of these startups. So uh, risk, of course, is a, is a big issue. Uh, I, I found many companies are worried, and sometimes, maybe sometimes, we hide behind the curtain and says, well, I can't take this risk because I need to deliver on a carrier grade services. While that is true, there is a way to manage these risks with a startup. And uh, the second reason I also will tell you, uh, uh, incubating startups into your operation and incubating your startups into your culture requires unbelievable um, uh, uh, motivation and dedication to make the startup successful within your environment. So I would tell you it's hard work, it's hard work, but for me, if anybody, um, hopefully listening to this, uh, this discussion with us today, if anybody wants to see a true results of what happens when you believe and you invest energy, passion, emotion, in innovation and startup culture, I mean, the result to me is just incredible. I mean, what, what's happened in Japan um, should speak for itself and come and look at the uh, composition of the companies that Racket and Mobile have selected and to a certain extent are now part of Racket and Symphony ecosystem. Well, we're gonna come on to culture a little bit later in our discussion, but I, I want to put a couple of uh, points to you to first, because I guess one, one easy criticism to make um, from the industry is that the approach you're advocating here is applicable to greenfield deployments, all very well and good, but it's not applicable to brownfield. What's your answer to that? You know, this is uh, one of my favorite questions that I get asked, as you know, uh, almost all the time. And, and let me maybe tell you and tell all the audience that, you know, if you look at Japan, first of all, we have to acknowledge that the choices of the architecture of the technology was a choice. You know, maybe the easier path for me would have been, okay, select a legacy vendor. There is nothing new. The outcome is predictable. You don't have to really work hard in terms of making something that I think is good for the industry as a whole, not just about Racket and Mobile. So um, one, I wanna really uh, make sure that we all understand that yes, Racket and Mobile was a green field, but first of all, it was a choice. And for many people that know the history of Racket and Mobile, before I came to Japan, Racket and Mobile was well on its way to select a traditional legacy infrastructure to deploy this network. And one of my first jobs on, uh, on my first day in Japan was to cancel this RFP, select a harder path, but one that I think will have a much rosier outcome uh, than, than following our legacy architecture that, uh, that we've been going at. Um, when it comes to Brownfield, I also would tell you that um, I heard this question many times. I would tell you my technology stack today has many compatibility of software features. You should judge me on the capability of our delivery to customer quality experiences. You deploy Racket and Symphony stack and its technology and compare our solution versus what you currently have in the brand field. I am not discounting the challenges of transformation, but truthfully, the challenges has nothing to do with technology and has everything to do with organization, culture, and mindset. So I am completely committed, completely committed to ensure that we look at Brandfield as a massive opportunity for Racket and Symphony. One that we're gonna find like-minded partners that want to go through this journey tr of transformation the same way maybe Racket and Mobile made its early choices. I think there are amazing companies today across this world that is looking at what we have done, recognizing that foundation of cloud, foundation of software, and the essence of the skills and the organization is really something that absolutely makes sense for them to embrace into this journey. And yes, it will be hard, but believe me, the end destination is just unbelievable. What they'll realize is an opportunity to transform an organization, maybe that was primarily focused on connectivity, to a truly organization that may be focused on services and digitization of new internet uh, streams that would generate revenues that far 
outpace the revenues that you are bringing from connectivity.